Uh, I think I'll go Utah because we was talk we were talking about that a little bit before we started recording. Mm-hmm. Um, Dallas, as we know, that Dallas is, doesn't have Luca, and I don't know when he's coming back. And Utah is basically at full strength, and they're still getting uh, whacked. So yeah, I, I I don't I don't know I don't know if it's like a chemistry issue because I I know half of them dudes don't like each other, or if it's just like. Is if it's just Dallas's reserves are that much better than Utah starters? So Ooh, I, I, damn, that's deep. That's deep though. That's, 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 a, like, that's, that's a serious question though. That's yeah. deep though. Yeah, I think you know what I think it is. I think it's defense. I'm I'm seeing games where Jalen Brunson is like, I love Jalen Brunson, and we talked about his value as a player because he's up for his extension. We talked about his value a lot over the last couple of episodes, and even we talked about it when we were on Green Room earlier this week. And the point that he's averaging on, like he's averaging over 30 points a game in a playoff series. And a lot of his points are coming in the paint. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing it with Rudy Gobert in the game. And I know there are a lot of mid range buckets, but a non three point shooter, who's a point guard, who's under six, five, if I'm not yep. mistaken, six, is one. six, one. So he's a very yeah. short point guard yeah. relatively as far as NBA standards. Curry's six, three, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Jalen Brunson's six foot one. People call Curry small. Jalen Brunson is six foot one. That's small. Yeah, that's yeah. Get into the rim whenever he wants. He's knocking down these mid range yep. shots. You know, he's been their best player. And as I mentioned, like even looking at last night's game, Utah's rotations were really off. There are a lot of open three point shots. Maxi Kleba, you know, is is knocking them down at a very high rate. You know, guys like Dorian Finney Smith are hitting big shots. Reggie Bullock, his percentage isn't off the chain, but he's knocking them down. So Mm -hmm. I think it's coming down to defense, because if you look at Utah's offensive numbers, they're not horrible. You know, Mitchell's been great. Bogdanovich had a a pretty solid series, and we kind of expected him to either him or Mike Conley to kind of be that second guy next to Donovan Mitchell. Um, They haven't been flawless on that end at all. But I really do think it's coming down to their inability to defend, which is crazy for a team that's kind of hung their hat on at that end for like the last couple of years with also the fact they have arguably by many people's standards, the best defensive player in the NBA and Rudy Gobert. This doesn't make any sense to me. So pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with Conley playing so bad too. Like mm-hmm. I feel like if he gave the team 10 more points or something, yeah, or whatever, I don't know what he's averaging. He's probably like what nine points? He's averaging Not 11. Even that. 11 it's 11 points. On 36% shooting and 25% from three. Yeah, see that's bad. He at least need to be like 18 to 20 in my opinion yeah. for them to go where they need to go. Yeah. So Will he have a better game four? I don't know. He, he's he been subpar the first three. So I would say he's not going to have another good game. Mm-hmm. So um, I would definitely, the way the Dallas Mavericks has been playing without Luka, I would definitely sit him another game. Yeah. I might sit him yeah. the whole series. I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. That would be they, they, yeah. they, to be they, the way, yeah, the way they play, especially uh, Max and Cleaver. I told, I told uh, he, <laughs> he came in game, hit three, uh, three straight threes. I, I send the chat. He he's the greatest three point shooter all the time. So yeah, he he yeah. he been he been playing good. Yeah. I don't know if if they keep if Jazz just keep showing if I'm the Dallas Mavericks and that and the uh, Jazz keep showing me that I don't have to respect them enough to to put Luke in the game. I'm I'm riding this out. That'd be the yeah. biggest flex. Jason Kidd is automatically coach of the year if he just says, "All right, we're not going to play Luke the rest of the year." That's a big ass flex. Yeah. But like even from game one, like. This could easily be a 3 0 lead because game one, Utah barely won it. It was, it came down to the wire. You know what I mean? So, this is yep. not, this is what we didn't want to see from Utah. You know, we knew this was a year where it was kind of Western Conference finals or bust for them. And they come off to this really bad start, even if they do come, come around and tie, because if they win the next, it'll be a tie series. We're still going to look at them a, sort, a certain type of way. You know what I mean? Like you lost at home. You let Jalen Brunson, like, you you think Jalen Brunson's first 40-point game was somewhat of, like, a fluke, and it was kind of like, uh, oh, he's not going to do it again type of thing, but he does it again in Jeez. one of the, the quote-unquote, <laughs> toughest places to play in. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's b- very bad stuff. They've even deployed their small ball defensive lineups that I was trying to hype up the entire season, and it just didn't – it hasn't yeah. done anything for him. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's what we didn't want to see from Utah. This is going to – I mean, it's, it's still 2-1, so they have the ability to still win mm-hmm. it. But from the way things are looking, and Carl, you mentioned Mike Conley's play and all of that, and their miscommunication on the defensive end, this team doesn't look like anybody that's going to go. They'd have to really just change shit and just get it right magically for me to think they're going to get past the second round, which is what they've been unable to do the last couple of years. So anything past second round, anything that's not past second round is a failure for them because they've just been literally at the same spot 
year in and year out. So yeah, I don't even think second. Yeah, I just yeah, like but so basically past second round would be West Conference Finals. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I remember you were hyping up Rudy and Eric Pascal when they signed up. You like these dudes could be small. They can go small. They can really switch these lineups. I was mm. like. I actually believe you because I was like, yeah, you're probably right. But now seeing it, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't like it has to be a chemistry thing, like like Blake said, because they have the talent there. Yeah. So it's they up just to don't them. Like it's each a, other. Yeah, it's up to them. It's up to them to produce. Yeah. And now we know, and now we know over the last 30 years why Utah, why people when people say, Well, why can't they win a championship? Because they're Utah. Everybody <laughs> knows what that means. Utah. Yeah, we say that the same way every episode. Utah. Utah. Yeah, no, even let's talk about Gobert's offense. I, I, you know, I'm a b-ball breakdown. I'm gonna shout him out again. <laughs> you talk about how bad he is on that end. If he's doing anything besides pick and roll, like his, I, I appreciate guys who play their roles to the best of their ability. He's a great screen setter. He sets up a lot That's of their offense. <laughs> well, but like he's a good, he's a great, he's a great role. Well, I can't even say great. He's a role yeah. player on the offensive end. But like yeah. eight points a game this series. And he's trying to post up and he like he can't dribble. He has no jump hook. If the pick and roll isn't there, what's he doing on offense outside of just screen setting? You how, know, are you, take, how are you seven plus feet? You don't have any seven offense. Plus feet. <laughs> yeah. That's that's just that's that's kind of that's weird. That's crazy to me. Yeah. You you seven foot, you you can't that, play offense. No, that just no, that just means basically he just been using his height most of his life to block shots and on the mm-hmm. defensive end. He's never really thought about offense clearly because I'll be honest, I'd say Clint Capella on offensive end over the Rudy Gobert. I, I would too. Yeah. So, yeah, I would too. It's one part of his game I'm surprised he's never really refined. Like, even if it's not going to be, okay, get down and post up, because not a lot of bigs are just posting guys up a bunch right now. Like, it's, you know, like a lot of guys, their thing is being able to run the floor and play defense and catch mm-hmm. lobs, you know, but even those guys who can just do that, they can, they've also added the ability to pass out of the pick and roll. He doesn't have that in his game. So one thing I like about Dallas is they is they've kind of taken the pick and roll out of Utah's offensive attack. And when that's gone, a whole bunch of their offense is gone, you know? And so now they're missing a major dimension that they had throughout the regular season. So once again, shout to Dallas' defense. Uh, fuck Utah's inability to defend. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just is what it is. It's sad. But I, I, like I said, it's 2-1 right now. So still a little early, but the point that this could be 3-0 is, is concerning. Yeah, as that, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. It's, that's it's, it's the way the games are going. Like, even if the games are closed late, I, f- I have more trust in the Mavericks for some reason. Mm-hmm. I guess because oh, they, sure. they, they, yeah, they have, they get timely stops. That's one thing about the Dallas Mavericks. I feel like they, yeah, they're a good defensive team, but I feel like they get more timely stops than anybody in probably the, maybe in the playoffs. Maybe I'm trying now, to think. Maybe Miami, years. maybe Miami does too. But Dallas, I definitely think they get more timely stops than anybody so no, far question. in the playoffs. Oh, my bad, Carl. No, go ahead. Would, no. You, would y'all say that Dallas, like right, I guess right now, is better coached than Utah, at least in this series? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 Jason Kidd is getting, he's getting to his players in a good way, I guess, mm-hmm. basically uh, better than Quinn Snyder is. Yeah, okay. this is the best coaching run I see. We've seen what two before this two coaching runs from J. Kidd. There was Brooklyn, and then there was Milwaukee, and he did some good things then and there. But it, you know, we, he never established himself as a great coach. But this run he's doing right now with Dallas, without Luca, it has been amazing. So yeah, I mean, not, not many excuses for Utah. I know Donovan Mitchell is beyond pissed off because he's averaging over thirty a game, and he's once again one of the. <laughs> He's once again yeah. like Don Mitchell's been one of the best playoff players over since he's been there. Like he 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 was an elite playoff player his rookie year, and then just stuff isn't working around him. You know, like I said, mm-hmm. Bogdanovich, I'm gonna give him his credit. He's playing well, but as I said, you're, if you're not defending and all of that, and when a major chunk of your offensive attack is taken away with that yeah. pick and roll, you ain't finna do shit. So it is what it is. So <laughs> they, 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 you know, I, I mean, they, it's, uh, it's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah, I don't, but. They, I guess I, watching them, it's just so frustrating because they 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 have a lead maybe uh for a quarter or something, and they lose the lead, yeah. and they're down by uh, 15 like it ain't shit. Yeah. And then they're trying to call their way back. Then they they make the game close towards the end, and they, mm-hmm. they do something dumb. Yeah. And then they just, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Move the team. How about that? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Utah, but, hey, relocate. Hey, they, they, love, they love Utah, girl. I don't know if that's going to <laughs> Yeah. They got a market. The thing is, they have a market that the games are very like it's tough to win. It should be tough to win there. The environment's great. Yeah, it's, the team just sucks. Yeah, yeah. I can't say they suck, but I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go. 
I don't want to go too far and say that this is over. But like I said, the point that, as I mentioned, the point that this could easily be 3-0 right now in favor yeah. of Dallas is like fucked like, up to me. We looking at it like that because they're playing this well without Luka. Yeah. The Mavericks yeah. are in the, in the, in the Jazz playing this bad. Yeah. Without Luka being on the floor. Basically, they're, they're a whole, what is their so, whole squad. So, I mean... If Luca was if Luca was to be on the floor, I feel like this this series might not even be close. You talk about Luca, we always like he he literally is there. Like I guess all since um since his rookie year, maybe after his rookie year when he first kind of converted to the point guard position, we kind of looked at Dallas as a team that was just so Luca. Everything revolved around Luca. You know, if he's getting to the paint, everything else opens up. Now they're winning and playing great basketball over three playoff games without him. You know what I mean? The pick and roll isn't there as much as it's been, obviously, because they don't have anybody who can run the pick and roll as well as Luca. You know, it's not as it's a you know it's a little bit easier to switch on them right now. So imagine them hunting switches with Luca on the floor. They haven't even done that. They haven't even done that shit yet. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's gonna be something to watch moving forward. But uh, I agree. I probably I, I keep game by game. I keep experimenting with the we're not gonna play Luca thing just to see what they can do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's been working. Yeah. And it's hilarious. Yeah, I would. yeah. If 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 somehow uh Dallas wins, I think they so do you think they play they probably play Saturday or Sunday. I think Dallas, Sunday. Dallas after that down. Dallas plays Phoenix. No, I'm talking about what day they play, but I think they play Sunday. Yeah, but whenever they play, know. yeah, when because they spacing it out, spacing the games uh-huh. out. So whenever they um play game four or whatever on Sunday, if they win that game, I'm sitting Luca. I'm yeah. not playing them. Yeah. yeah, I may sit them the next two. Yep. Yeah. I said, but where they're playing now, I, I don't think I'd mess that up to be honest with you. Me that'd, either. Be, that'd be the biggest flex of all time if you don't play Luke. Right? That's, 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 yeah. that's, that's a troll move. That's bro, yeah, Utah that's should be you, Utah, you, Utah should be ashamed of themselves if, the, if, the, if these if the, if the Dallas Mavericks just say we don't care about y'all, we ain't gonna play Luca and we still go beat you. Yeah, what was, what was uh, what was Chuck saying yesterday about that uh, Timberwolves and Warriors game? Uh, it's, it's talking about coaches that was dumb as a box of rocks. Oh Man, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Utah, Utah, Utah did. Yeah. So this is crazy because now we're talking about potentially if Utah gets first rounded, there are three guys potentially entering the trade market. Potentially, Gobert, Donovan Mitchell. I said potentially. I said I say it's going to happen, and then also the possibility of Quinn Snyder becoming like a free agent coach or whatever. That's crazy as hell. That that the, all those three things could, or maybe two of those three things could end up happening. And that's going to change the scope of a lot of the league. So a lot revolves around Utah's inability to do good shit. So. Question. Yeah. How many more years does uh, Donovan Mitchell have on his, on his deal? I think one, I think he's got next season. And he's free agent. Let me go check. Okay. Donovan Mitchell. So if we tell him he want to be traded and they don't do it right now, they go yeah. potentially just lose out. And he just go leave. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was watching the podcast. I, I think it was like a football podcast or something mm-hmm. the other day. And talking about how like player empowerment and stuff like that. If you you still you got enough you got enough years left on your deal and you want to get traded, I mean you you're gonna they they have to trade you opposed to what 10, 15 years ago, they can just say no, you're staying. We're gonna keep you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's mine now. For, so it could it's not for a minute actually. He's it's actually 20, 24, 25. Oh god damn, yeah, he stuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that. Traded. He better work his ass off to get traded, boy. Yeah, he better just he, not show up to practice. The, uh, he can take the Ben Simmons route. Oh Lord, that'd be so ugly. Yeah, nah, he's too good. He's too good to take that route. Yeah. 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 I think they can build around him and build something better. I think it's gonna be it is gonna have to revolve around a change in coaching. It's gonna be a completely different style of basketball if we are talking about moving away Rudy Gobert. Um, Cause I feel like if they lose, that's what, that's just what the case is going to be. You know, like it's going to be get Gobert out of here, try to, you know, I think that's what's going to end up happening. And yeah, there are a lot of good trade assets on this team. So we'll see what it is. Um, but it, it's going to, this, the way this plays out is going to totally impact the, like Utah is going to be one of the teams to talk about in the off season with the assets they have and with the moves they're pro- possibly going to make um, given that they've been this bad in the first round. So we'll see what ends up happening, but yeah, Utah should not be. This hey, hey, they sucked. Yeah, they they absolutely suck. Um, so you-